Today, I'm going to level up your chord knowledge and we're going to capture the essence and sound of math rock through these chords. So to do this, we're going to take a chord that you already know. Nice, safe sounding C major chord. And now we're going to make it tell a story. You can hear that difference already. And more importantly, I hope you can feel that difference as well. If this chord tells a story versus this one. Sorry, I got carried away. I get too excited about these things, but um, yeah, this chord makes you feel something because it contains dissonance. And dissonance doesn't mean it has to sound bad. In that C major nine chord, got that nasty interval going on. But when we bring the context of the rest of the chord, it's kind of hidden in there, but that's what makes you feel something. And that's largely what captures the math rock sound. It is this use of dissonance within chords. Now one you to keep in mind, math rock guitarists and Midwest emo, these are often lumped together. But these guitarists make use of lots of different tunings. But the application is still the same. We still get this dissonance within the chords. But for the sake of today, we're going to stay in standard tuning. But here are some examples of the same concept in FACGCE tuning. And DAEA C sharp E tuning. So through those two quick examples there, hopefully you can see that we can create dissonance through other and unique interesting ways. So now we have some essential background information, hopefully have a better understanding now of what makes math rock chords different from more conventional chords, let's say. Let's jump into the next section, the meat and potatoes, the part you've been waiting for, we'll learn some chords. Do keep in mind that math rock bands make use of many different chords, many different tunings, but these chords are an excellent starting place for you. We're going to look at major nine chords, and minor nine chords. And I played a minor nine uh, when I got carried away in the introduction there, uh, but we'll come back to that soon in a second. But for now, let's go back to the C major nine shape. I want to teach you this in three places on the fretboard. So no matter where you are, it's gonna be uh, one of those major nine chords available to you. So we've got this initial C major nine position here. We can also play it from the root on the E string as well. And there's also an availability for us to play it from the D string root as well. And now let's move over to one of my favorite shapes, the minor nine shape, this initial shape, and then this one, and then on the D string. So yeah, like that. Um, I wanna get carried away. I wanna teach you loads and loads of chords, but I think that's a good place for you to start from. One final thing I wanna leave you with, an added extra bonus for you for waiting around learning these chords is often in math rock, we don't always strum the chords. One big thing that we do is arpeggiation. The arpeggiation is playing single notes of the chords. So what I want you to leave you with today is a picking pattern I want you to practice along with these chords and I'll give you a sample chord progression as well. So this progression is going to go C major 9, E minor 9, then we're going to end on a G major 9. And the pattern goes like this, I'll play it slowly for you and I want you to copy this picking pattern. If 
we speed that up, we get this like typical Japanese kind of math rock arpeggio picking pattern. <laughs> some chords for you to get started on your math rock journey. If you'd like a chord chart and the tabs for the stuff that you've seen in this video then there's a link for that down below in the description. Check out my math rock ebook to learn more. If you would like to learn more about chords then I suggest watching this video next. Thank you for watching, thank you to the patrons and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye!